Good evening and Happy New Year's Eve to you. I'm John Reynolds filling in once again for Taryn Johnson. And in what has already been a topsy-turvy beginning to the 2020-2021 basketball season, the CUSA made another significant change as teams enter conference play. The Conference USA Board of Directors, Board of Directors voted to utilize divisional standings and to, to form two divisions within their conference. The new format will include seven teams in the East Division and seven teams in the West Division. As for WKU, they find themselves in the East Division with Charlotte, FIU, Florida Atlantic, Marshall, Middle Tennessee, and Old Dominion. The standings will be based on overall conference winning percentage, and at the end of the regular season, there will be two divisional winners from the East and the West. For the Conference USA Tournament, scheduled for March 10th through the 13th in Frisco, Texas, divisional seeding will be used, and a cross-divisional bracket will be used to determine the first-round pairings and matchups. Transitioning now to the University of Kentucky as they prepare for their upcoming matchup in the Gator Bowl with NC State on Saturday. Kentucky comes into this one the underdog, toting a 4-6 record, which in most years keeps you out of bowl contention. But be that as it may, the, the Wildcats will square off with the number 23 team in the nation, the ACC's North Carolina State Wolfpack. NC State comes into the game riding high on a four-game win streak and having won eight games total on the season. University of Kentucky head coach pointed out that some younger players may play a vital point in this game, even Bowling Green's own Vito Tisdale. You know, I think they're, they're all working hard and, and, and doing good, and I think going to be really good players. And we talked a lot about Vito this year. He's, he's showing out and, and uh, doing some good things, has a really bright future. So um, we'll see. Sticking to collegiate bowl games, we transition over to the Wisconsin Badgers who defeated the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 42-28 in yesterday's Duke's Mayo Bowl. But after the game, their victory was shattered, literally. Following the victory as they celebrated in the locker room, you can see Badgers quarterback Graham Mertz dancing with the trophy when the glass football slips off its pedestal and smashes into pieces on the locker room floor. In a later post on Twitter, Wisconsin football said the mishap was clearly an accident. Mertz later acknowledged his fumble, saying, quote, I dropped it, that's on me. The quarterback also guaranteed that will be the last trophy he ever drops. On to the NFL now as the Tennessee Titans look to exploit the Texans' defense in their upcoming matchup this Sunday. The Titans enter this one, this one with the NFL's leading rusher, Derrick Henry, who once already this season torched the Texans for 212 yards on the ground. Despite having an all-time great defensive lineman in J.J. Watt, the Texans' defense has struggled heavily this entire season, especially with opponents rushing attacks. Houston sits near the top or sits near the bottom of the league in rushing defense, having given up nearly 152 rushing yards per game. And in opponents' yards per carry, the Texans are dead last in the NFL, giving up five yards per rushing attempt. Derrick Henry says, though, that with the division on the line, stats go out the window. They've been playing, you know, good football every game that they've been in, and they're pretty close. And you know. Um, we just got to go out there and play. As a division opponent, we both know each other well. Um, we have some good guys on defense. They play hard nosed football, we play to the football, tackle well. So I know they had some injuries, but you know, we still have guys over there that can, um, that can get after it. So we just got to go out there and focus on what we need to do and try to win the game. And finally, last night, NBA history was made as Becky Hammond became the first acting head coach in league history. Hammond took over coaching duties for the San Antonio Spurs last night after head coach Greg Popovich was ejected following two technical fouls for arguing with the officials. Hammond, 43, is in her seventh season as a Spurs assistant after a 16-year career in the WNBA. She's previously served as head coach for the Spurs during the NBA Summer League, and the Spurs would go on to lose last night to the Lakers, 121 to 107. And Morgan, with 2020 being a year full of firsts, what better way to end out the year with more of the same? Back to you.